Welcome to Eric's Hobby Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to build some industrial tanks like these to use as terrain for all your favorite war games. Let's get to it. The basis for this project today is going to be these three cans. I chose this shape of can because it's a little bit less distinctive looking than your average soda pop can. First I'm going to remove the tabs. and then cut myself a base out of chipboard. Once I have that base, I'm going to use some of these plastic pipes that I got off Amazon. They're super cheap. I'll try to post a link for you guys because a lot of people have been asking about them. I do sort of a dry run here to see where my cans are going to line up in relation to these pipes. And then I mark it on the base. Then, I measure the diameter of the little circles inside the rims here, so I can block that off with a bit of chipboard. Compass helps me make some nice round circles, so I trace that out on the chipboard, and then cut them out with some reinforced scissors. I hot glue those to the ends. As you can see, a little bit of water was still in one of these cans. It's leaking there on the left. I have these pieces from this board game called Stratego. I found a bag of them on the street one day. Figured I never know when they'll come in handy. And it turns out they'll come in handy right now. I'm going to use these to mount my tanks on. Mark out where they are. Glue them on. That keeps my tanks off the ground. Next I'm going to build a little structure next to the tanks. I used some pieces that I had lying around in my bits box. One of these is a semi-trailer for a really small car. That's a pill bottle in my right hand there. And the other one I can't remember what it is. I think it's from a cheap army car or something like that. Some back panel type deal. But hoarding bits like this really add a lot of detail really quickly when you're putting something together on the fly. I glue those pieces down with a little bit of hot glue. I glue my tanks down in the same way. Then on the end of each tank, I glue a little pipe segment. Cool glue that pill bottle down and then the next piece I'm going to use is the hair curlers I think I don't know I've never used them for what they're supposed to be used for but I found them at the dollar store near my house they've got these cool shell pieces on them that add a lot of detail really quickly to my tanks leaving a nice space in the center there for my feeder pipes to come down in from this tank at the back for the next step, I'm cutting some pieces to add a catwalk across the top. I have an entire video on catwalks and bridges where I cover this in more depth, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But the gist is I use this sculptor's mesh, glue it on the top, using super glue this time, cut the excess mesh off the edges once it's dried, and then add a railing and trim using hot glue. Again, go check out my video on bridges and catwalks if you're interested in this. I cover it a little bit in more depth. When that's done, I glue it on top of my tanks. Next I use this cheap sports racket that I got at the dollar store and using some wire cutters I cut out a little segment of it. This makes a really quick and easy ladder that's just about the right scale I need. Pretty dead on in fact. Attach that with some hot glue, one on each end. Very accessible. Next I use a bit of cardboard to add a bit of detail to my thing on the back there, that little tank so it doesn't look so much like a pill bottle. One at the top, one at the bottom, and then I add some more pipes to the back. 
big one coming out the side. And using a candle on some plastic rod, I gently bend it. Again, I covered this in a previous video, but make sure you're wearing a respirator and have some sort of fire extinguisher nearby because this can be a little bit tricky and a little bit dangerous. This stuff is known to give off toxic fumes, so when in doubt, check the safety data sheets. Anyways, it's a handy technique, allows me to make a few extra small pipes that I'll attach here and there to add some more detail. The more the merrier when you're doing this, I say. Next I had this little 3D printed barrel I got off the internet. I got a bag of 20 of them or so for about 6 bucks on eBay. Then I used a little length of necklace chain to drape over one of the pipes. I'm not sure why that would be there or whatever, but it looks cool. Here's another bit from my Bix box. No idea what it is, but it's going right on top. Now it totally doesn't look like a pill bottle anymore. This green bit is actually the front of a motorcycle that I think was originally for a Ninja Turtle. I found that in the thrift store. So you always got to keep your eye out. You never know when a fun little bit's going to come in handy. One more little piece of pipe. That should do it. Add a few little bits and bobs around the corners on the ground. Little bits of mesh. Little random bits. Just to give it that lived in feel. Then I add white glue all around it, spread it around with a stick, and pour sand on there. That'll get that ashy, grimy, abandoned look that I'm going for. Cool. I think we're ready for some paint. I spray painted it black, and then using some acrylic burnt umber color paint, I heavily dry brush slash just paint pretty much everything. Then come in with some silver and dry brush it over top. That gives me a good base, bringing out the details, and I'm already starting to get that worn industrial look. We're going to go a little bit farther this time. I paint the tanks with an off-white color. This is going to create some contrast and allow us to do some really cool weathering effects in a moment. I add a little bit of pure white to the very tops just to add some extra contrast. Next I start applying a homemade wash made from black India ink, acrylic paint and water. There's only a few drops of ink, a few squirts of paint and mostly water. I put it mostly on the metal areas at this stage to add extra contrast and darken up the corners. The more ink you use, darker it'll be. So I start adding some to the white areas, sparingly at first, but then with a very thin wash I make sure to get a lot of water on there. This allows me to come in with a palette knife and scrape away some paint in areas where the water has started to lift off the acrylic paint. This is a technique I just kind of stumbled on as I was doing this to be honest. Weathering is a lot easier than making things look clean from my perspective. Once I have a few nice scraped areas, I come in with a bit of brown paint and paint some thin lines coming down to indicate a rusty drip. Then I come in with some watered down orange and paint over the same areas. This gives a fairly realistic rust effect really quickly. I add some to the metal bits as well just to give the overall rusty appearance of the rusty water dripping down off this old metal. I'm adding this rusty orange to the front as well. You can apply it fairly liberally as it dries a little bit less vibrant than it appears when it first goes on. This is just orange paint mixed with brown paint, watered down pretty heavily. I get all the metal bits with that, do the same on all the sides. Finally, I dry brush the sand around the base with grey, and we are done. 
I'm really pleased with the results on this piece. I was able to complete this from the very start to the very finish, including all the painting, in just one day, and that's very gratifying. I'm particularly pleased with the weathering effects on the white tanks. I've seen a lot of methods like this that people are using online. Some of them use pigments, some of them use weathering powders, some of them use complicated solvents, oil paints, and this is just using the same acrylic paints I always use, I was able to achieve a result that I'm really happy with. So this is a big win for me, and I hope you guys try some of these techniques yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment down below, and consider sharing with your friends. The positive feedback I've gotten on these videos so far has been really inspiring and really pushes me to keep going. So thank you all for tuning in. I'll try to keep making cool videos if you guys keep tuning in and enjoying them. Thanks for stopping by and we'll see you on the next episode of Eric's Hobby Workshop.